Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Anime Sundays, the show where we talk about anime on Sundays. And today we will be having your forger run the gauntlet. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. So today we have your forger from Spy Family running the gauntlet. I kind of wanted to run this gauntlet because, you know, your has been snapping as of late in season two in Spy Family. And I think we're kind of sleeping on her combat abilities as a pretty elite character. So we have a gauntlet here. Uh, yes, I made this gauntlet myself. If you have any problems, you know, I do not care. A couple of parameters for this gauntlet. Um, your can recover after every round and every character in the gauntlet will have their default weapon. If they have like, you know, a standard sword or daggers or even a pistol, that's what they'll start out with uh, in this battle. Usually when I do gauntlets, I don't do morals off or anything of that nature just because I feel like it takes away from the realisticness of the fight. I feel like we need to have all those character traits involved uh, when we're discussing cross versus battles. Because if we're discussing cross versus, we gotta discuss everything, right? All right, first on the list, we have Mugen from Samurai Champloo. Uh, a great swordsman, kinda has a non-contemporary style of swordsmanship. He's uh, very acrobatic, he adapts quickly. He doesn't really have such serious martial arts core training that he uses in his fighting. He's fought, you know, swordsmen who can kinda cut through air. He adapts quickly, he's cunning. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't say he's like super durable. He's not more durable than Yor. He, even speed wise, I'd probably still give it to Yor. Probably would put up a good fight, but I think he would get clapped by Yor eventually. Moving on, we have Mikey from Tokyo's Revenger. Now I'm not completely caught up on season three, but I did watch some battles from season two against him and Taiju and Black Dragon and versus Kasaki's new gang. I think it's called like Kenjaki or something like that. And a couple of the cats from his past. Also, again, I'm only using the anime versions of these characters. I don't know too much about the manga. I don't know about grown Mikey and how strong he is now. I know people say he tears through armies and shit, but even as a young cat, we know Mikey could take on multiple characters. You know, if you get hit with that, that serious kick, it could be a one shot move, but there are characters who have tanked Mikey's crazy powerhouse kicks and you know have lived to tell the tale or have got back up and tried to keep fighting I think Mikey could, is very capable against Yor But I think Yor is still just a better martial artist and even if she does get hit with a few kicks She should be more than fine again Yor from that ship scene is you know Fighting multiple serious professional assassins even when she's around crowded people, she's keeping people safe. She's tanking all types of weapons and poison. I just think like a couple kicks from Mikey really isn't gonna do that much, especially cause he doesn't have his own kind of standard weapon, no sword, no gun. So even though Mikey does have a lot of great, you know, martial arts skills, we know he has some dojo training and we know he can be pretty durable as well. A couple uh, of yours daggers to the head and he's gonna be taken out as well. Next up, I have Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. I mean, we all know, bro, he's an intergalactic bounty hunter. He's fought multiple armed men with crazy weapons. He's infiltrated facilities. We know he's a great pilot, but he wouldn't have his ship here. And we know he has great martial arts combat skills. And his biggest advantage in this battle is he would have his pistol. Now, we know Yor knows how to deal with uh, enemies with guns and all types of weapons. So I don't think it would be a huge obstacle for her in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Spike is nice, but I still think Yor is still a little bit better. Again, her expertise, her never really missing a mission and always kind of being the top assassin that she is, Spike is going to have a lot of trouble really putting her down. He would really have to try to plan ahead to really catch her slipping. And even if you remember in Cowboy Bebop, there was a scene where Spike was just casually, you know, boxing against some random guy who wasn't even a main villain and he was getting his ass whooped slick. So I feel like if Spike, um, you know, even though he has his weapon and he could take on multiple cats, even without his gun, we've seen that too. I still think Yor will take that cake unless he was using some type of weapon from his ship or his ship in general. But again, he just only has his standard pistol. All right, now we have Thorfinn Young. Like I said, this is Young Thorfinn from season one. Season two, we know he's a pacifist. I chose season one because he would be a little bit more eager to fight, obviously. And I think he's just a little bit more sharper on his skills at that time, even though we know Thorfinn can still fight in season two. I just think season one, you know, him being fresh in the battlefield, you know, in war times, this is when he's at his best. I mean, we know Thorfinn, the feat of Thorkel, that's a huge feat in its own. Thorkel is, you know, damn near an army by himself. We know Thorfinn could take a lot, but I think Yor could take a little bit more. When Thorfinn gets hit hard, it kind of really affects him and we've seen that with Thorkel a lot like if he wasn't really using his brain to try to overcome bro 
he would get clapped. We know he doesn't have any guns or anything like that. He's serious. Thorfinn's killed hundreds of men. These are grown, experienced soldiers in war times. Some of the, you know, best that the Vikings and his verse have to offer. Yes, Thorfinn does have the bloodlust. Don't get me wrong. If caught slipping, York could be in trouble. And we even know that their fighting style is similar as well, right? They both use daggers. They both kind of use a two-hand style dagger combat. But also we have to remember that Thor is raised in a times where it's you could really call it rudimentary combat. So you're having experience with guns, knives, poison, electrocution, whips, all that stuff, I think would still give her the more combat and martial arts advantage. Thor from only being from those, you know, older Viking times, he has no idea how to kind of deal with stuff like that. And so I feel like Yor would still have that advantage, uh, even hand to hand. All right, now we're moving on to Nicholas Brown from Gangsta. If you haven't seen Gangsta, it's a real great anime. You know Nicholas, he's a tag, Twilight. We know in the verse, Twilights are kind of enhanced humans. They have enhanced strength, speed, physical prowess. We know specifically with Nicholas, he's deaf, but kind of enheightens his eyesight even more and his sense of smell and taste, right? He can sense people from far away, blood in the air. And we know the Twilights do have a little bit of physical advantage, right? They can leap up onto buildings. We've seen Nicholas kick cars and dent them. His fight against Doug was a pretty elite showing of how nice it can really be. And we know Nicholas is very durable, right? He can get stabbed up and he can really kind of tank that off. If he has any of his drugs, his Cerebra uppers, it makes him even more powerful. So I think Yor would definitely have a super hard time here. But even though he's an elite tag, he's still not the best of the best um, out of all the tag ranks that he's fought. And with a little strategy, Nicholas can easily be taken down. He doesn't really plan too much about his fights. He's a great swordsman, don't get me wrong. Probably physically stronger than Yor, but we've seen Yor just casually get hit by cars and even had Lloyd Forger on the run when they were playing around, right? So here, I do think Yor would still take the battle. I think it would just be a high diff for her. We forget that Yor is also very strategic. Her battle experience and her countermeasures to deal with multiple enemies, especially enemies that are professionals, I think would trump Nicholas a little bit here. And after she noticed that he's not just a normal human, I think she would lay more on her speed and find a way to try to get in that killing blow. Uh, on Nicholas, especially if she could figure out that he's deaf, that could be a hindrance to him, especially if you can cut off some of those stronger senses that he's using. So here I do think it would be a high diff battle, but I do think it would be yours as well. And then lastly, we have Afro Samurai. I mean, if you've seen any of the Afro Samurai movies or the show, your man is Lee, right? He's cutting bullets in half. He's taking on dozens of warriors. Again, a lot of these warriors are kind of scrubs a little bit, but again, nonetheless, taking on multiple warriors, just like your, you know, he's pretty adorable when he's fighting those two twin kind of like those two twin fencers, he's getting, he's catching, you know, blades in his foot. You know, Afro's a gangster, man. We know he could really hold it down. He's ruthless. And even in that battle when he was fighting the robot version of himself, which is probably his best feat, right? He's dodging kind of laser beams in the air. He's falling out the sky. He's fighting a whole robot at this point, right? Something that, you know, he's really had no experience and he still takes it up. So here I would say your, again, I still think it's a little bit more durable, uh, but I would say speed and strength are probably the same. And, you know, athleticism and ability to adapt, I probably would give to Afro in this sense. I mean, it could really go either way, but I think maybe in this instance, I would give the edge to Afro Samurai just because I don't know how your would be able to deal with the robot of that sense. Now, again, Yor, even in her battle on the ship, she still kind of made it out pretty unscathed after dealing with a whole bunch of assassins. Yes, she did also have help as well. So I think that makes a big difference, right? You know, she didn't just solo all them. You could probably scale Afro speed to be a little bit more here. So I think that would be really the only advantage that he would have um, in defeating Yor. All right, y'all. So that is my Yor Forger Runs the Gauntlet. I just wanted to kind of show a little bit of love to Yor. Um, she's been killing it in season two, and I think she's kind of slept on as a combat character. Some of you may think she clears this list. Some of you may think she stops at like Spike or Mugen. If you disagree, please let me know in the comments. And with that, we'll see y'all next Sunday.